It is finally Sea of Thieves release day and houses across the land are filling with the sound of sea shanties and pirates crunching on bananas. It's a beautiful thing. Some of us have been lucky enough to play the game for a while, so we thought we'd share some of our best tips and tricks we've picked up along the way. From some sailing basics that you might have missed, to which weapons to use when, and how to prepare for an island adventure. These tips and tricks will give you the best head start in Sea of Thieves. Okay, let's get a biggie out of the way early. How do I fire myself from a cannon? Well, first of all, you need to make sure the cannon is empty, so hold Y to unload the ball itself. Now, look at the end of the cannon and you'll have the option to hop in and fire yourself. This is the only way to travel. Note that when you're inside, you can't aim the cannon, so you need to do this before getting in. Just select the cannon as you normally would and point it where you want to go. For close range targets, aim directly at them. It gives you something to smack into and stops you from flying for miles into the horizon. For more distant targets, you have to start playing with trajectories. I find that aiming vertically up gives me good results as you have more time in the air to adjust yourself for landing and to get the lay of the land. But hey, even if you miss, this is still pretty fun. Before I raise the anchor and get the ship moving, the first thing I like to do is get my sails ready. On the sloop, you've only got the one sail to worry about, but on the galleon, there are three you want to unfold. Along each side of the ship, there are three pairs of ropes. You drop the sail with this one and use this one to position it. Angling your sails in the direction of the wind ensures maximum speed. The wind direction is represented by these white lines, so turn the sails until the lines are running right into them. You'll know you've hit the sweet spot when they suddenly puff up with a delightful floof sound effect. Even if the wind isn't blowing in the direction you're heading, it's worth shifting the sails to capture the breeze. Any kind of help can add more oomph to your travels. When all three sails are billowing, that's when I like to raise the anchor. You press X next to this wheel. The more people do it, the faster the anchor raises. My favorite anchor trick is the handbrake turn. If you suddenly find yourself off course and need a more violent change of direction, push the ship's wheel all the way to the left or right to start turning the ship and then drop the anchor to perform a violent skid to the left or right. You'll need to quickly raise the anchor to be on your way, but you will also unlock an achievement in the process. Nicely done. The ship's wheel is where you steer. No surprises there. But the really important bit is the compass on the right. This shows you the direction you're currently traveling in. When you're spinning the wheel left and right, it's easy to lose track of which setting is dead straight ahead. Look closely and you'll spot one golden spoke on the wheel. When this spoke is dead center, the controller will gently rumble telling you to hold the wheel in that position to go straight forward. Otherwise, you'll slowly turn in a big circle and they'll start calling you Captain Big Circle. Ideally, you'll be working with a crew who are looking at the sea chart below deck and shouting out instructions for you to follow. If not, there is a cool bit of ship design that will help you. If you're on the smaller sloop, then you can look at the sea chart over the wall just behind the wheel. It saves you from having to run all the way down. And on the larger galleon, you can look through the hatch on the upper deck to see the map below again saving you running all the way from the wheel to the ship. The sea is full of thieves, yes, but some of these thieves double as murderers who just want to sink you. It's worth having a member of the crew scanning the horizon for potential enemies, and during the night, you can extinguish your lanterns to make yourself harder to spot. Combat is going to be inevitable, so my first tip is to keep cannons loaded. You collect cannonballs from the red barrel below deck. Scoop up a maximum of 10 and load cannons with the Y button. Arming weapons during peacetime is better than panicking during a fight. The key to ship combat is pretty simple. Aim just below the waterline. There's no point punching holes in the upper decks when there's no water to flood in and sink the ship. You'll know that shots aren't just getting lost in the sea when you see flames and smoke on impact. Also, try to spread shots along the hull in order to spread out the holes and make it harder for the crew to patch them up. Follow this guidance and you'll notice ships sinking incredibly quickly. An even crazier trick is to detonate an explosive barrel in the hold of an enemy ship. These deadly red barrels can be found on islands. During combat, you need to pick it up, climb into the enemy vessel, place it below deck, and shoot it to create loads of holes at once. It's an incredibly risky move, but when was pirating ever about playing it safe? When your ship springs a leak, you have three options. Plug the hole with a plank, bail the water with a bucket, or scream. The last option isn't helpful, so we'll focus on the first two options today. For starters, when you're on board, make sure every crew member carries planks of wood so they're prepared for emergencies. Next, you have to know when to fix the ship. 
Cannon fire is an obvious threat, but holes also open up when you crash or scrape a rock. If you bump into anything, you should always check for holes immediately. This happens most often when you drop anchor too late coming into an island or outpost. Ugh, we've lost loads of ships this way. When dealing with damage, always start with holes on the bottom deck. The middle deck won't start taking on water until the lower deck is full and drags the middle deck to sea level. No point fixing cosmetic damage while the sea pours in below you. And there's actually some science to dealing with the leaks. On the Galleon, a single player can bail water from one hole faster than the water can fill it. Two holes are the maximum amount of holes that a single person can protect against by bailing out water. If you see three holes or more, you'll need help as the water comes in faster than you can bail it out. On the smaller sloop, a single pirate can bail water at about the rate it comes in through six holes. So if you see seven, you need help. At any rate, I always plug first, then bail later. But it's good to know you can keep afloat even when you're full of holes. When hunting for treasure in Sea of Thieves, treasure maps come in two flavors. The classic X marks the spot map and riddles. For the first type, you first need to find the island on the sea chart. Hold the right trigger to study the map and the island's unique shape. Now use the sea chart and zoom right in. When you're zoomed out, it's hard to make out the island shapes. Once found, press A to mark it. When you reach the island, the quickest way to locate the cross is to use your compass to find which way is north. The map also shows north, making it easy to work out where you're standing. The cross doesn't appear on the ground itself, but you'll know you've hit gold when the first dig with a shovel gives you a loud clunk. Treasure riddles are trickier. These name the island, so use the sea chart to find your destination. Don't zoom too far out though, as names vanish at a distance. Reach the right island and the next riddle appears. There's a huge variety of puzzles, all referring to specific landmarks, but there are some reoccurring themes. If the riddle mentions music or instruments, you'll need to play the concertina or hurdy-gurdy like so. If a riddle tells you to go in a specific direction, then use your compass to find it. And if the riddle mentions a number of steps in a direction, then select the compass and hold right trigger. In this mode, your head bobs every time you take a step, which lets you count out an exact number. You'll be up to your neck in gold in no time. Before you even set foot on land, it's good to empty the cannonballs and planks of wood in your inventory into their respective storage barrels on the ship. Most islands contain barrels full of extra ammunition and wood that you'll want to be able to collect in full. Also, it's not like you'll need these items whilst you're away from the ship. But don't pack away bananas. They restore a quarter of your health bar and will definitely come in use when you're attacked by skeletons. Whatever you're looking for on the island, be it treasure, bounties, or pigs, take the time to properly scour it for extra goodies. There are messages in bottles that wash up on the shore with bonus missions, meaning you don't have to pay the outpost traders for them. Look for a telltale glint and go for it. You can also find extra planks of wood and bananas lying in the sand. Grab everything you can and start filling those storage barrels back on the ship. Until you cash in at outposts, treasure chests, bounty skulls, and trading goods are a liability. Rival ships want to steal them, so you need to make it as hard for them as possible. Good hiding locations include up in the crow's nest, as it's the farthest place from the main deck and takes loads of time to reach. Plus, you can shoot whoever is climbing up the ladder. Or try putting it on the captain's balcony around the back of the galleon, because it's quite fiddly to get to. Tucking them behind barrels or to the side of the stairs below deck is another good place. You can make this even more effective by turning off the lanterns below deck with the X button. During the night or overcast days, the darkness makes it especially hard to navigate without a lantern. If you're feeling more acrobatic, you can climb to the crow's nest, hop to the sails, cross beams, and balance a chest up there. It's a really devious hiding place, though you need to make sure you don't break your neck retrieving it. You've got access to four weapon types in Sea of Thieves. Cutlass, Pistol, Blunderbuss, and Sniper. You can only carry two at any one time, and you can switch your inventory at this armory cupboard on the middle deck. Each weapon has its benefits. The pistol is accurate at close to mid-range and will take out most enemies quickly. If your foes are grouped up, that's where the blunderbuss comes in. As it's widespread, it doesn't require that much accuracy. The sniper is good for laying down cover from the ship itself. You can thin out the herds of skeletons and protect crewmates as they dig up chests. Remember to shoot ahead of your target if they're moving. The benefit of firing from the ship is that it's easy to restock ammo from the box below the armory. For our money, the best combination is the sword and the blunderbuss. You can use the blunderbuss for crowd control, and when there are smaller numbers, the sword can be used to conserve ammo. 
The best thing about the Cutlass is that it doesn't run out of ammo. There are also hidden techniques with it. You can block with the left trigger, and holding the right trigger charges up a forward thrust that will wipe out weaker enemies and do a hefty chunk of damage to stronger bouncy skeletons. So those are our top tips and tricks for mastering the oceans in Sea of Thieves. As everyone plays more, we'll pick up more tricks, so why not share your words of wisdom in the comments below? We're definitely keen to hear your tactics for taking on the Kraken. And if you enjoyed this video, do make sure to subscribe to the channel. We're going to have loads of Sea of Thieves fun over the coming weeks, so do join us for that. Anyway, I've got some treasure to hunt for, so I better be off. See you again soon. Bye.